Hi guys! So I'm still working my way through my rainbow bookshelf and for April I've decided to only read orange books and I have a huge TBR. I'm not sure I can actually manage to read all of them but I'm pretty excited because there are tons of really great books in there. One book though I'm not particularly sure about um, if I'm actually gonna like it and that's Mark Twain's Letters to His Wife. This is a German book um, that's a collection of all the letters that he and his wife wrote each other. And um, I, since I've bought this book, discovered that I don't really like his writing. I had so many quotes that I absolutely loved by him and I thought that I would like his books. And I've since then discovered I don't. So this might be a pretty sure DNF for me and but yeah maybe maybe I'm gonna like it maybe I'm gonna write his uh, like his no, um, non-fiction writings so to speak um, I'm gonna try this out and if I don't like it I'm gonna give it away to charity um, another book that I'm gonna read uh, in April is um, some sets Moham Moham's cakes and ale um, this is about a young couple that gets married and the uh, wife is the second wife of the husband and she gets sort of obsessed by his first wife. I think she decides to write a book about her or something like that and yeah she discovers all, all sorts of things about him and um, his first wife. This has Rebecca vibes to it and I am excited to see uh, how this turns out. Um, another classic that I want to read, because I want to read more classics this year, is Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. I don't think I have to say too much about what this is about. This is about um, quite an old man, I think he's in his... old man? <laughs> man in his 40s, I think, um, who sort of abducts a, a young girl who's 13 years old, who's an orphan. He starts dating um, her mom, the mom dies and he uh, says, oh, I'm gonna take care of her and he is in love um, with Lolita and he, this is, um, this book is described through his point of view and he describes it as this beautiful love story and he couldn't resist Lolita because she's so seductive and um, he constantly rapes her, but he doesn't see it as rape, he sees it as consensual sex. And I think Vladimir Nabokov really wanted to show how we can feel for a monster if it's written in his POV. And I think he wants to really show the lie that the narrator is um, telling himself. Uh, I've seen the movie with Jeremy Irons, which is a fantastic movie. And I've always wanted to read the book and um, I think it's going to be quite a heavy book. I mean, it's quite a heavy subject. But yeah, another modern classic that I want to get to. Um, the next book is uh, a much more modern one. It's Exit West by Mosin Hamid. Um, this is, uh, is a, the setting is in a um, war zone. I think it's very much like Syria right now. And suddenly doors appear out of thin air and these doors lead to the west I think and uh, there's a couple called Nadia and Said. they're newly in love and they're experiencing this, uh, experiencing this horrible war and they decide to open one of those doors and step through. This is um, magic realism which is usually not my, to my taste um, but this is supposed to be so terrific and I'm really excited to read this one. Next one is a really, really different book. It's um, Maisie Dobbs by... Is it, oh, it's Jacqueline Vinsbear. Uh, this is the author. Okay, this is Maisie Dobbs by Jacqueline Vinsbear. I th hope I pronounced her last name correctly. Um, this is... Um, a detective story that's set in the 1920s. Detective stories usually aren't really my thing, but um, I uh, watched the show Miss Fisher's Mysteries, I think it's called, on Netflix, which is also set in the 1920s with a female um, detective. 
or solves all kinds of crimes and mysteries and I absolutely loved that show. It, it was just fun, you know, not too deep but like an entertain entertaining show and after reading Lolita, which is gonna be pretty heavy, I think I can use a bit of a lighter pick-me-up. And yeah, Maisie Dobbs is a detective in the 1920s London. She worked her way up from being a lady's maid um, to being a woman who has her own detective office and she really knows how to work the different kinds of people. She can talk to working class people, she can talk to um, upper class people and she knows how to get information from both uh, classes. And I hope this is going to be fun. If it's fun, um, I definitely want to read the rest of the series. I think there are like seven books or even more um, within this series and this is the first one. The next book is one that I'm really, really excited about. This is Another Brooklyn by Jacqueline Woodson. I've read her last novel, Red at the Bone, uh, last year and that was amazing. If you want to read a good short book, read Red at the Bone. It was such a great story, um, really great writing and I think this was um, her first novel. Not sure about this. Um, but this place in the Brooklyn of the 1970s and what it's like to grow up as a um, woman of color within that pretty harsh setting and how it's hard to grow up as a young girl when you're constantly surrounded by men who don't particularly have the best um, ideas when it comes to you. Um, I read the first couple of pages before I bought it and really fell in love with it right away. And after having read The Red at the Bone, um, I know this is going to be a terrific read and a short one at that. The next book is um, another book that I'm really excited about. This is a library copy of uh, Ada's Room. This is a German book um, by a black um, author who I think grew up in London and then moved to Berlin. Uh, yeah, she, she was born in London and now lives in Berlin and she won a really, really important um, literature prize um, for that's really important in German-speaking countries. It's called the Ingeborg uh, Bachmann Prize and she did a fantastic speech there, how hard it is for authors of color to be published um, in the German publishing industry. So if you think it's hard to get published in the United States or in the UK, it's so much harder to get published as a person of color um, within German-speaking countries, in my opinion. Um, so I'm really glad she, that she won this prize and she is quite the acclaimed author. And this is um, a book that really reminds me of Yajazi's um, Homegoing. This describes Ada, who moves through different timelines, I think. She's constantly transported to different centuries. I don't know how, um, but sh this way um, the author uh, is exploring what it means to be a woman, what it means to be a woman of color throughout um, the different centuries. And that aspect of it really reminded me of Homegoing, which was is one of my favorite books of all time. Um, and so I really want to get to this one. Uh, the next book I've had on my shelves for quite some time. This is Your House Will Pay by Steph Cha. Um, she writes about um, the 1990s and I think this is a bit of a fictional retelling of the riots, I think, that were in LA after a Korean shop owner shot a, a black girl um, that she accused of having shoplifted a gun or something like that. And there was a lot of tension, there was a lot of a destruction of Asian grocery stores and that sort of thing. And um, after the horrific crimes uh, in Georgia, Atlanta, I really wanted to get to, the, to this book um, because it's. I think it's so important to be an ally to all people who experience racism um, and this I think is such a unique perspective because it deals with the racism 
between two minorities um, and two peoples that experience racism and how the uh, myth of the model uh, immigrant or model minority um, really hurts uh, not just the black community but the Asian community as well and this I think is a fictional retelling of this one and is supposed to be really really great um, it also has a Korean background um, so yeah I'm pretty excited to read from this perspective um, another book that I've had on my shelves for quite some time is Kristen Hanna's The Great Alone. Um, I have so many books by her and I haven't read a single one of them. Uh, I have The Nightingale and I think Firefly Lane and this one. And I still haven't read a single one of her books. But they all sound genuinely great, so I'm, I'm gonna give this a go. Um, this uh, is a family with an alcoholic father, I think. Um, that also plays in the 70s. A lot of the books that I'm reading this month um, are set in the 70s, I think. Um, he, uh, the, the father comes back from Vietnam and is a really volatile man. Like he's, he's he, I think he hits his wife and his children. And this is described as um, from the point of view of the young daughter. And he... They um, move to Alaska, um, where they want to live in the great alone. And I think it describes the family dynamic and how hard it is to live with such a volatile and difficult father and how that influences um, not just the mom who is being hit, but also the girls who have to watch that. So another heavy read um, for this month. Um, last but certainly not least is a nonfiction book um, about Alex Cutts. Uh, Alex Katz is um, a New Yorker painter um, who does constantly paints the like really cool standoffish New Yorker woman, um, but he also does like amazing minimalist prints. I, I hope you can see this. Um, if not, you can just Google him. Um, I saw an exhibition in Vienna a couple of years ago with my dad. We both absolutely love his style. I don't love every single painting because some of the pictures just look weird in my opinion. Um, but the paintings that I do love, I genuinely adore. Uh, and I really want to read more about his um, paintings and why he paints the way that he does. And uh, yeah, I always love reading about art because I have an, an, a, an a, a, MA in art history and I really want to make sure that I don't lose my connection to my education. So yeah, that's my pretty big um, April to be art. I think there are 10 books or so, um, but a couple of them are pretty thin uh, and so I hope I can manage to get to all of them. And I'm pretty sure the Mark Twain is going to be a DNF for me. Um, what are you going to read this month? Um, have you, do you also read just one color per month? Um, what are you most excited about? Oh, there's one book I, I actually forgot because I still don't have it. It's my birthday next week. Boop, boop. Um, <laughs> and I asked my dad for the book Clara and the Sun by Kasuo Ishiguro, um, which is a fantastic book, uh, uh so I've heard. Um, I, I think about a robot and she is... Um, standing in the shop waiting to be sold and um, it's uh, the artificial intelligence of, of that robot has um, come so far that she really has all kinds of thoughts about the people who are coming in and it's um, described from her perspective. I hope um, I get this book for my birthday. <laughs> uh, if I do, um, I definitely want to get to that one um, in April because it's a, a book that I'm really excited about. Um, and yeah, I do want to support um, Asian authors because especially right now, but it's honestly every single year, every single month of every year, it's important to this, um, support uh, authors of color. So yeah, that's... <laughs> Now, it's generally it. Um, do let me know what your April TBR looks like, um, what you're most, most excited about, and I will see you soon. Bye!